It's very different. Exactly. Okay, so I I don't have a talk planned, and I just wanted to get a dialogue going about uh, orbital fuel depots and a little higher level, just in, in space servicing of various capacity, whether it's uh, you know satellite repair of some sort or whatever else. Um, you know, I know people are talking a lot about, uh, especially orbital fuel depots. Those come up a lot as a key piece of infrastructure that will have to be developed. Um, it's easy to talk about these things in concept, and you know, I think different people have varying degrees of understandings of the, the, the practical aspects of how these are actually going to be implemented. What does a mission to one of these actually look like? And so, I just want to talk about that and, and just see and like, get thoughts on like, like how is this going to play out practically as well? Okay, so you know, a fuel depot, great. Like you have fuel, so then you know, do you? Does that stay stationary, uh, or relatively stationary, like where it's not um, thrusting at all once it's in orbit, or you know, is that sort of idea that takes place? Um, just like people will talk about, you know, repairs of some sort, or well, what kind of repairs? Like what is? Yeah, are you talking about repairs of the fuel themselves? Um, no, you just, you know, I've heard people just reference like, you know, you can have like repairs done have some sort of like servicing thing that can bring fuel to do other sorts of things and like what are those actual things? So, so Voiloff is an issue for, for certain types, and, and that's, so when I say approaches, I'm thinking, you know, what, what kind of fuel are we actually talking about? Are we talking about like, hypergols? Are we talking about just oxygen? Exactly, exactly, so. Um, I mean, would we have, like, RP1, like, would that even make sense? Probably not. Um, I don't know. Any thoughts on that? Yeah, all liquid. Is, is RP one's not cryo, right? No. 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 Uh, methane. Methane. Okay. Which is not cryo. And her liquid form. No. No. Some degree of pressure. It's it's historical. Historical. Okay, got it. Um, so it, it sounds like cryos seem to be the more discussed, especially if you're bringing it from elsewhere. I don't know, has anyone heard anything about hyperboles in orbit? Is those, you know, those I mean, yeah, like cryo is potentially. Oh, 
Just uh, announcing for everyone who's coming back from the tour, um, if anyone's interested in doing the mission control, that will be starting up uh, in just a few minutes upstairs. Uh, so that will take approximately an hour. Otherwise, enjoy the sessions. Yeah, yeah. 
announcement the uh, mission control simulator will be upstairs it's the only one we're going to do today we have uh, room for a few more people i believe so um it's starting up right now upstairs Thank you. 
geo satellites is you've got to get a lot of weight up there. And if you could say carrying five years worth of fuel, you could use you could turn a lot of that weight into capability. And maybe instead of uh, being able to carry a thousand tons, you could carry two thousand tons or five thousand tons. And, uh, well, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I do, uh, you also have the fact that this is not true. You say the, yeah. Yeah. the abilities of satellites are constantly yeah. being upgraded. So if you've got the thing up there for 20 years, you've got an old satellite. But the cost of them is such that you want to keep using it. So I worked on uh, SkyTerra, the Jews, they should sell it, they're really large in the South Pacific Coast at the time. They're really impacted by that time, in some respects, because they had to leave the red wheels to go and raise everything to pursue it. And those gyros, uh, that's where it's really critical, it requires momentum to make that fuel over time. And you're doing momentum a lot more often than both the cell and do it, because your antenna is so large. Basically, you're getting a lot of
started on evangelizing space. That means come over here and sit down and listen. Anybody who cares about space at all should come to Pod 1 right now. And if you don't care, you're going to hang out and eat cupcakes and just talk bullshit all day. But if you actually care about what we're doing, you can come over here and let's just talk about it for a minute. I love <laughs> we know. Yeah. Um, Amen, brother. So this is the evangelizing space um, panel, and uh, we're... All of us are here for a reason, and you know everybody's. You know I, this reason has been reiterated about 18 times by 10 different people so far in this. Uh, a, you know, in, in as many different ways as each person has their own personal connection to it. But you know, there's something inside of us that makes us want to spend an entire weekend sitting around people, you know, preaching to our own choir. Um, and uh, that that yeah, we don't we, we don't have, we don't have anything else to do. Um, no, uh, <laughs> the. There is something that is that dr that drives us. It brings us all here. Um, and that way, 
Hi. Okay. Okay. All right. So um, there's, there's something that's going on that has driven all of us to, like, you know, spend our entire weekend here and, you know, talk to everybody about this stuff and really obsess about doing things like, you know, going to inhospitable barren rocks with big rocket vehicles that are basically flying bombs. Um, and... You know, so it's very, it's, it's, this is a very strong drive for all of us, and it's very reasonable to us, but to other people, it is an unreasonable thing to do. It is a waste of effort, a waste of time, and it's outright confusing. You know, what we have been talking about here has been basically trying to put ourselves in a very risky situation out in the middle of nowhere um, for no other reason than just to say we did. Um, or, you know, at least that what might appear at sometimes. Um, but we know that we're right, and we know that those views are wrong. And uh, part of our job here is, you know, being, is caring about this is to try to push our beliefs onto other people, which is evangelizing, um, which is at least... I, I, am I going the right direction here, Scott? All right. <laughs> um, so a lot of people have been putting in a lot of work um, on doing just that, about selling this dream, selling this. And, and selling isn't quite the right word I want to use because, you know, it's, it's such a, you know, that word is, is thrown around so much, you know, and, and it, it inspires a value transition. What we're trying to do is we're not, you know, it, it advises a transaction. You know, we give you something for the energy you give us. Um, I don't like selling. I don't like that word. I, I kind of prefer sharing. Experience, like, and, or, or, you know, or inducting people into the brotherhood, if you will, or, you know, sister, you know, brotherhood plus Molly. <laughs> um, no, uh, the, uh, so, um, basically, without further ado, I, I want to I wanna have Scott show us a great video, and I want you to tell us a little bit about that. Uh, yeah, well, it's certainly not my video, but, um, I mean, bottom line, it, it speaks for itself. When you simply show people the amazing things that that we can accomplish and, and the the beauty that is space and, and the potential that it has for for humanity as a whole it, it really speaks for itself people just need to see it in a way that they can relate to and understand um you know most people have no intuitive relatable sense of how far the moon is from the earth or how far mars is from the earth and so um i think it's really important and so um last weekend at the new space conference i met ryan and kyle who are artists and um they did the paintings on the wall and um they also do video um just for this purpose <laughs> all right um <laughs> Uh, yeah, and so uh, we just want to start this off with a video they did of uh, some of the great things that are going on in the industry right now, and then we'll go from there.
was five years old, my dad gave me a book called Tom Corbett, a Space Cadet, and about halfway through it, I told my dad I was going to be a spaceman. The word astronaut hadn't been invented yet. If I can go, then everybody else can go, because I'm an ordinary person. The rest of the universe is only 50 miles away, straight up. So let's go see what it's like. You know, we were frustrated by the fact that, you know, sort of this mentality of, well, these guys are, you know, they're, they're just a little bit too scary. They, they're a little bit too cowboy, I guess. So uh, yeah, if, if you guys, I, I'd love to hear from you, just, um, I know you guys have done a variety of things uh, just trying to get people on board. I'd love to hear a little about your experience with how people have responded and, and then just maybe start a discussion and see like, you know, what do you see as the next steps and how do we move forward and how do we, uh, you know, get more people aware of, of what we're doing? I'm glad you guys like it. Uh, and thanks to some of the, the companies that are actually here. Um, and I wanted to tell a story to kind of put things in perspective on this topic, which is I went to my first New Space conference three years ago due to Ryan, who was much more into space than I was. We're business partners, and we have a company. It's a production company in Santa Monica. And he said, hey, you know, you would not believe all this stuff that's going on. And I had no idea. I was a complete noob. I was just like, oh. And I was like, really, really? You know, as we dug and dug, and then he said, there's this conference, you know, and everyone I would want to interview or talk to is going to be there. And I thought, well, let's apply for a press pass and see if we get it, and if we get it, we'll go. So in my mind, it was going to be at NASA Ames, and we were going to go, and I was like, we're going to have a hard time. We're not going to attract these people down. It's going to be, I just had a whole different perspective in my mind as an outsider as to what this, what this was like. And when we showed up, we were the only people there with a the camera. And I was shocked. I was like, I, I thought we were gonna have a hard time. I mean, we could literally just rub elbows with any of the characters or people. They're not characters, they're people. I'm not a fictional person. Well, they are, they are characters, uh, not, not fictional. But, but that was a big eye-opener for me, because I was like, wow, there's just nobody here. The one day there was press was for Teachers in Space, which is an obvious story and a great story and a great initiative, which we're also doing a video for right now to help them push that along, and we learned about that right there. 
But that was the only day that like local media, and it was pretty much local only, that was there to cover it. And I was like, this is a shame. You know, this is a real shame because the rest of us, we're, I'm not an engineer, Ryan's not an engineer, but we're like kind of everybody here's fans. You know, like we're super fans that go to the extent of making artwork and making videos just kind of celebrating what it is that all of this space is doing. The rest of the world's tuned out. And the, where, where it led after we went to that first space conference is we went, we, you know, we're like, this would be great. This would make a great TV show. We've done TV. We've sold shows to networks. We just sold another one to a network. It has nothing to do with space. But I was like, this will be easy. You know, this is like, this is untapped. You know, this, I mean, you see things on Discovery, but they're like one-off kind of special things about, you know, highlighting some. But we're like, you know, we went through the whole uh, idea of fleshing out and spending about a year developing uh, what we thought would be an easy sell. And we went around to all the networks, got our doors slammed in our face. And especially Discovery, I was shocked. They're like, we're not doing space anymore. Space is boring. What? That's Discovery, out of the mouth. I was sitting in the office, and they're like, space is boring. We're done with it for a while. It's not selling well. We've got, they're only interested in, you know, uh, what, what's, it's, uh, well, well, no, they, I mean, yeah, they're like, we're making auction shows now. We're not, and, and that's a shame, too. So but this is the reality of what's going on. In broadcast, yeah, space auction, <laughs> space auction. So the show didn't sell or hasn't yet. We're we're still working with it, and I believe everything's cyclical, so it will come around. And and the, all of the news of the space shuttle program ending and things like that, much more media attention and probably room for what's next. So perhaps we were a little a year early, um, but it's an important topic because. It's easy, like he said, preaching to the choir. It's easy to sell within this own room, and it's easy to sell, and it's easy to talk about all the science and technology of it, but there's a very important element, which is public support, and that comes into policy. That comes into, um, you know, just general uh, interest, you know, to have that. And uh, another thing, I mean, this is just an embarrassing thing for myself. I didn't know this place was here. I've lived here 15 years. And I don't know why that is, but and I would have been here a long time ago if I'd not. Now I know. Now we can help spread the word. But that is our role. Our role in this community is to help spread the word of every person's story. I mean, every big or small, you know, big company, little company. We're interested in going and pointing our cameras and talking to anybody. Someone asked if we had a YouTube channel. We've been designing it so that we could launch it with a lot of content, not just one thing. And we intend to, you know, continue to make small videos. That's what we're going to do is make short form content in any story. And please get our card or whatever, because if you've got a line on a story or something that needs to get out there that can, um, then we will. And we've self-funded everything that we've done and we'll continue to do that. But we really, we really want to help. I mean, we know, I mean, it's such a cool thing. And both Ryan and I both want to go to space. We absolutely do. And uh, we're counting on everybody else to get us there. And we'll have a camera in our hand and put one on the rocket, you know. And, uh, you know, we've been very uh, grateful to the companies who have allowed us to come and film because we also understand that it's not all, you know, there's ITAR, all these things you can't get out. And we're sensitive to that. We have no, we're not, we're not uh, muckrakers. We're not digging up dirt. We're not trying to, you know, find the scandal. It's not that kind of thing. We're literally from your side going outward to the rest of the world to tell the story. So anyway, that, that's, that's my two cents on the whole thing. And I'm glad you liked the video. I'll let Ryan speak about his art. Well, can you bring art over? Oh yeah, I can. I get five. They're just, um, you know, they're just my, the way I can make a contribution to you guys as a community. And you know, I'm not I'm obviously an engineer, but um, I do what I can. I make art, and I'll be involved in these kind of conferences. I'm continually finding more and more and more conferences, so I just like to spread the word, and I feel obligated to. Uh, Bring everybody together, get your opinion, and help us. You know, m meeting all you people. I, I know we've got topics to cover that I'm not thinking of, or if you have ideas, we'd love to talk. Maybe we can have a chat about those ideas here. Um, working with people like Robert Snelson, who's sitting over there, she's helped us a lot at the Mojave Airport. You know, just opening up a bunch of doors, getting footage. Just there's so much that we can all do if we combine our ideas and what connections we have to make a bigger picture. Uh, oh, that was another thing. Um, we've, we, along the way, except for the TV networks, we would show this, this piece and another piece that we have that we can show if we have time that was sort of the teaser for the show that we've uh, somewhat abandoned. But everybody that sat there was like, oh my gosh, are you kidding me? I mean, like they were so, like in our studio, we'd run it, hundreds of people come in and out every month. 
and say, hey, you got to check out this space stuff. And everybody is like, I have no idea. I mean, we watch a light bulb turn on over everyone's head, and there's not a single person that sat down and watched that video or the other one that didn't say, yeah, it's not for me. Everybody wanted to know more, and that was the thing to invoke question and to invoke just a little spark. And then we even had people this year going, well, hey, I'm thinking I might like to go to that space conference thing. So it can be done, but it does take that kind of messaging, and it's got to look good. It's got to be kind of sexy and fun and good music and all that kind of stuff. The quality is, is I mean, is key, well, you know. We can, we can do the graphics and the motion graphics and music and we've got, you know, full on production company. We have a studio at the Santa Monica Airport. We have a converted airplane hangar that is a full on production company. Um, so I'm, my goal is to really focus on space media. Um, we've kind of formed a company with Rick Tomlinson called In Space. Productions, which is kind of a sister company to the one we have now, but it'll just be focused on space topics only and space art and space uh, products and merchandise, um, whatever we can think of to just expand the new space horizons, I guess. Um, I don't know if you guys have any questions or topics. <laughs> so, how can we, like, so you said you're, you're launching a YouTube channel, for mm -hmm. instance. Um, I mean, is that kind of, other than like selling your show, uh, do, do you see a, a good viability of just getting videos out of YouTube? And is there anything that we can do to be a part of that? And I think the, yeah. big, the biggest part is kind of letting us know okay. what's up. You know, if there's a launch or something, Robin's been awesome about that. She's like, hey, there's this launch. I think that they'll let you come. And I, the, I have to tell you a really kind of sidebar funny story. The first time I went to Armadillo, and uh, that's why I use that like we're a little too cowboy, whatever, in the video because we're out in this field, and I'm brand new. I don't know anything about anything, and I'm like, I'm standing out here in this field with a camera, and that thing's about to take off. I'm like, what if it blows up? Am I far enough away? So I'm like sitting there with the camera, and I push this, and I run the other direction. <laughs> I was like booking it like across the field, and they were laughing at me. They're like, yeah, I was clearly far enough. They wouldn't put me there if I was in danger, but. But I just had that moment where I was like, wait a minute, I don't even know these people. They're crazy. <laughs> and I'm about to shoot this, and what do they care? I signed a release. I'm like, this could be it, you know? But it was great. And, they, you know, and I'm very, also very grateful to the company. And this is what we need to know. Like, we know, we communicate and decide what we should and should not show. And it's all for the movement forward. But it's like, even the mistakes and stuff are important, I think. And, you know, we have dialogue about that. But knowing it's like, hey, if there's some cool thing going on at SpaceX or if there's something, someone that even has the need of a video, we can usually figure out how to get it done, you know? And we can go get footage. And it doesn't take that much time out of our lives. Do you know about this 100-year Starship project? No. We should talk. I... I definitely rely on everyone else, you know, to kind of feed us the information because we're busy in the edit bays editing and stuff and not always totally That's dialed in. Building of trust and relationships with all these companies that, that helps a lot when we have ins to make that a more comfortable situation for everyone. Um, so, so uh, I'm sure you guys have, but like, have you found this, the difference in pitching this content to? You know, say a cable channel versus a pay cable, like an HBO or a Showtime. Like, they're not interested. Mm -hmm. they're not interested. The, the, the thing is, is that for right now, I think it's got to be free and anywhere and everywhere. You know, and if the, I mean, one thing you can do, if you can put, attach sponsors to a show for a network, you've got a show. I mean, that's what drives it. Um, a big sponsor. Like you get Coca-Cola or somebody. And I've talked to Coke. They're one of our clients. I've talked to them. They're like, mm -hmm. everybody hymns and haws about it right now. That's not... Other places, I think history said, like, well, you know, when, the, when, when new space is flying every single day, then it's worth a TV show. I partially understand why they're saying that, but at the same time, the other big problem for them is that the, the time, you know, the, the time from when a project is started to when it actually happens is long. But that's why we wanted to talk to multiple companies, so we were kind of always cycling something that's happening in the industry. And it, that's all ramping up just now, so hopefully we're in the right place early so that we can be the people to tell that story. And again, it's not about us. It's just about us being there when it's needed to capture stuff. Or, you know, we don't even have to shoot it. If somebody else is going to shoot, give us the footage, we'll make something. We it's will. It's not about rockets either. It's also, you know, every industry that goes along with the suits, the everything, yeah. food, fashion. you know, fashion, art, yeah, you know, everything. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, we've got to wrap it up. Okay. Well, I think we're a little over. Yeah. Um, yeah.
Just don't tell us if you have any questions afterwards.